Okay, so the Super Mario Brothers movie has been out for a little while now. Wanted to get to this video sooner, but sometimes you can't. But hey ho, hopefully it's given more time for people to see it and we can have a proper chat about it because I have some things to say. In fact, this background ain't gonna do it better. Because as with most movies that are coming out that I do want to enjoy, I watch the trailer and then I'll go and read some reviews and I'll go on the internet and social media. And I am absolutely flabbergasted. I'm absolutely shocked at some of the reactions to this film, specifically from those that call themselves movie critics. Now we do have to, you know, underline that if you are a movie critic and you are a reviewer, you should always be honest, you should always be transparent, and you're allowed to have whatever thoughts that are in your brain come out through your mouth or come out through your hands. That's totally cool. But I won't name anybody specifically because I think that's madness. You know, I don't want to throw anybody under a bus. How anyone could not understand A, what this movie was trying to achieve and B, just how joyful it is, is absolutely beyond me. And a lot of what I did read in the reviews was people saying, oh, they want it to be the Lego movie but it's not like the Lego movie. Oh, you know, it's not really a hybrid of a kid's movie and an adult's movie like a lot of Pixar films, right? Because that is the holy grail. If you're trying to make an animated film, it's good for kids. They love it and everybody will go to the cinema and spend money. However, because you are the dad or the mum or whoever, taking your child to see this too, you're going to get something out of it that everybody wins and maybe you go see it again or maybe you recommend it to somebody else. Now, I am not a young man. I mean, I don't have children of my own. I would not be considered a child mentally, absolutely. But in terms of my physical prowess, I'm a man in their mid thirties. I, I thought it was wonderful and I thought it was joyful. And as someone that has grown up on Nintendo and has grown up on Mario and Luigi and all of these things, the sheer amount of Easter eggs they put in there blew my mind. The absolute best one, I suppose this is spoilers if you really want to go in completely naked, is when Mario is in the Mushroom Kingdom for the first time and they walk past an antique store and you just hear a toad in the corner saying, well, if you blow in it, it will probably work. Making a reference to flipping NES and SNES games that you would have to blow at the top of the cartridge to put it in the machine or the console. I hope that it worked. I don't know where that came from. Nintendo have come out many a time and said, no, don't do that. You could absolutely destroy the game. But be it that, be it the little pieces of music they throw in there to tie into what you're seeing, the characters that come up, and the performances too. Now, the big question mark beforehand was Chris Pratt's going to be Mario. What are we doing? Why isn't it Charles Martinet? Now, Charles Martinet is still in there. He's a fantastic job. Obviously, he's not Mario. And the movie kind of starts with Mario and Luigi doing a plumbing advert where they really do have the full-on Italian accents, which I thought were okay. Now, I understand why you don't want to ask Chris Pratt to do that for 90 minutes because it's probably going to slip here and there. But the joke is we did it for the advert, but we're actually just got slight Italian accents and we're from New York. Ultimately, it is just Chris Pratt talking. But after about 10 minutes, I was like, you know what? I don't even care. I don't even care. Mario is fine. I get if I could have chosen, would I have chosen Charles Martinet? Absolutely. But I think you could also probably make the argument, do I want a 90 minute movie of wahoo, wahey and everything up there in that range? Maybe it would have drive me nuts. I actually think it would have brought warm and fuzzy feelings to my tum tum. But you just kind of accept it. And you, well, at least I did. And you're like, I understand he's a massive movie star. He's probably responsible or at least in part responsible for the amount of records that it is broke breaking. Although I think that's just the Nintendo magic and the fact that it's just awesome as far as I'm concerned. But Charlie Day as Luigi is really, really good. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong is fantastic. I mean, it's kind of how Donkey Kong has been in the games, but I think we've kind of pushed it a little bit, but it tickled me and that's all that matters. And basically, you know, whether it's Bowser, Jack Black or Princess Peach or the Toad or whatever it may be, the Toad, the Toad that they focus on. I, I didn't have a problem with any of the voice acting, which is something else that I read in the reviews. Oh, it's lackluster. Oh, it's a bit boring. Or oh, they're going through the motions. I didn't pick up on any of that. I didn't pick up any of that at all in anything. It feels like a love letter to Mario. That's the main thing they want you to take away from it. You get all the characters, dry bones is in there. There's an amazing bit with Luigi's mansion. That's all I say. I don't want to spoil it for you, but he turned the torch and I was like, yeah, <laughs> like an absolute nerd burglar. And they don't stand on ceremony at all. It's a 90 minute movie. They want to get in when they want to get out and they want to set the scene. I'm going to imagine for a bunch of sequels There's an end of credits thing that we'll talk about later on as well. I'll warn you beforehand so I won't spoil it for you. I mean, at one point, Donkey Kong and Mario are in a slightly worrying situation where it looks like they're not going to be able to get to the big old fight at the end of the movie. And I think they solve this predicament in about 60 seconds and it happens all the time just so we can jump here there and everywhere i suppose one criticism you could aim at it is that maybe we could have elongated these little things a little bit but we don't need to i know that mario ain't gonna die <laughs> The Donkey Kong ain't gonna die. Let's just move through it and get back to where we need to be. And again, spoiler, turn off if you don't want to see this bit. There is a post credit scene where you see Yoshi. I think it was in New York as well, because they get to the Mushroom Kingdom, they go into this big sewer. And I think we're back in the sewer that has the pipe leading through to the Mushroom Kingdom. And Yoshi hatches out of an egg. And genuinely, one of the things I said to my girlfriend as the movie was ending, is like, it's wonderful, five stars as far as I'm concerned. Had a great time, feeling warm and fuzzy in my tum tum. Could have used more Yoshi. I mean, you do see them in a fleeting moment during the movie. And then Yoshi cracks out of the egg. So we do Super Mario Brothers 
Brothers 2. I suppose it'd be like Super Mario World and Mario and Yoshi will go on some kind of grand adventure. I'm sure there is a way you can sit in a theater and watch the Mario movie and come up with the criticisms that I did read. But I also think if you do that, you're totally ignoring what has been achieved here. Now, I quite like the original Mario's movie with Bob Hoskins because it's bizarre. I don't know how they came up with it. I don't know if, um, I can't remember the actor who played Bowser now, Dennis, whatever his name is. I, I don't think he knew what was going on. I don't think he knew he was in the film. I think it just happened. And the plot is actually gibberish. Like, I, I, whoever wrote that down on a piece of paper must have been high, as far as I'm concerned. But I do like the fact that it's so out of left field, so I take something from it. But in terms of, you know, relying on what animation has become in 2023 and bringing all the little elements that you'd expect in a Mario movie into something that you can watch and enjoy... Even if it had just been the music cues, I think that would have been enough for me. Because again, this music was written in the mid 80s. It's much like the Street Fighter soundtrack. It just never gets old. And when you add all the orchestra and all the, you know, extra things into it, actually, it makes it even better. But every single character works for me as well. Princess Peach is a bit more of a badass, but they've been doing that in the Mario games recently. That works for me. The one toad we focus on isn't cowardly, but the rest are. So you get that. Mario is fine. Again, Luigi is a show stealer as far as I'm concerned, much like he is in the games because Luigi is underrated and an absolute joy. As Again, Donkey Kong, fantastic. And Cranky Kong, I could do this all day. There is a Mario Kart sequence in there where I thought I could have cried, right? It features Rainbow Road. I think we can talk about that because it's in the trailer. But it's a double tease because you do, when you arrive at the Kong land, you do get that they're all driving carts, but then you get a proper one. And they even select, <laughs> they even select their carts and you see a Kong making it. Do you know how happy this made me? It made me damn happy because Mario Kart is the best game ever made. It just is. It, it's perfect. And it, you could take Mario Kart 8 and just keep reiterating that and make it Netflix for Mario Kart. And I would be a happy man. So if the point of going into a cinema, watching a movie is making you feel good, I don't understand how you could have done it better than this. And I went back and read some of the reviews afterwards. I just think they're a bit grumpy. <laughs> Maybe they associate more with Cranky Kong than anything else. Like people say that it's shallow and that it doesn't hit the, I mean, it doesn't hit the heartstrings very much if you have no interest in Mario. The story, like I say, is completely nothing. But that's so that again, you can get to all the levels and you can get to all the environments. But you have to think that anyone that is associated with Mario, be it from back in the 80s or you played it in the 90s or you played it on the Wii, you played it on the Wii U, whatever, you played it on the Switch, it doesn't matter. Nintendo does a very, very good job on sort of catching you up without you even realizing and make you an historian when you haven't even picked up on it. Want to say perfect, but I'll say perfect and I'll leave the T off it because they may do a sequel that is even better. But I loved it. I'll absolutely see it again. When it comes out on streaming, I'll do a backflip. And anytime I'm feeling down in the dumps, I put the Mario movie on. When you hear something like dun, 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 da, 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 when you're in Princess Peach's Castle, you're like, ah, they did it. Even have the pictures in Princess Peach's Castle from Mario 64. When he goes in there, I was like, please, 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 please. And they have them. And it's all about fighting for a damn invincible star. So at the very end, you get ba, 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 da, la, ba, la, la. Family Guy still has the best joke when it comes to that. So I just wanted to sit here and rant and rave. I wanted to do it last week, but hey ho. Hopefully you'll find this after the fact and you will agree with me and if not there's a comment box down there come at me man it's all good and you can send me messages at simon316 on instagram and twitter too it is fitness channel uh, 95 of the time unless mario comes up on nintendo because they're the best grillmind.com forward slash simon you can somehow get 10 percent off there's a link down there these are really good supplements i'm on cameo uh, there's a slight um discount on cameo videos at the moment personalized videos so just search for my name on cameo you can get some money off it's applied automatically so you don't have to do anything and what else do i have patreon.com for simon 316 if you want to support me with the money check out my podcast simon is pro wrestling show check out what culture wrestling ups and downs i'm on there as well and i have merchandise which will be on the screen right now there's links down there and i think that's everything so the mario movie rocks it made me damn happy i'm absolutely going to watch it again it gets a five star 10 out of 10 review if you don't like it good for you man Opinions make the world go round. If you don't like it because you think that it doesn't replicate Mario, well then, yeah, I think you're crazy.